I am Thomas Blais Leblanc, and you're listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book creators and supporters. It's February 15th, 2021. I'm John Swinimer. You want to drop me a line? You can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Tom Blais LeBlanc about Casa Rodeo. The podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. And it's also available on the True North Country Comics channel on YouTube. Tom is a cartoonist born in Montreal with a master's degree from the University of Quebec. His previous work, Seven, won the Real Filion Award in 2018. His current project is Casa Rodeo, which has been described as Tom channeling the chaotic yet precise slapstick of Chuck Jones' Looney Tunes while infusing it with a subtle sense of existential dread. Casa Rodeo is about finding one's place in the world, both figuratively and literally. So without further ado, here's my chat with Tom Blay LeBlanc about Casa Rodeo. Tom Blay LeBlanc, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate your time. So what I normally do to start off the interview is ask the creator about their first comic book. So I'm wondering if you remember, what was the first comic book that you read? Well, the first, I don't remember one specific. I have two that are very, like, like classics for me. Uh, so I, I grew up, I, well, I'm still living in uh, Quebec. And uh, the comics that we had here are, well, they were like the French classics like Asterix, uh, Tintin, mm -hmm. and Lucky Luke. For me, like uh, the one that really told me like, oh, I want to make comics in my life were uh, Marcel Gottlieb's uh, La Rubrique à Brac mm -hmm. and uh, Mandrika's uh, Le Concombre Masqué. So I, I don't think there are actually translation, uh, English translations for those comics because they're they were not as popular as like Asterix and Compagnie, but uh, like La, La Rubrique à Brac was a, a great way for me to discover like slapstick and parody. Okay. And it, mm -hmm. it was so funny because it's, it was just like a, a couple of short stories and um, there were like parodies of fairy tales and uh, mockumentaries about animals. And uh, one of the most recurring characters was Isaac Newton and the different ways that he invents the theory of um oh i, I forgot <laughs> i forgot the theory okay well. now would you find these at the corner store or where would you find these books actually they were my parents my parents oh. were uh, big readers during the uh, 70s mm -hmm. so these books actually date from the 70s actually like uh, these uh, these comics i used to read them in the library in the school library or something but the comics like La Rubrique à Brac and Le Cocon Masqué were, I couldn't find them anywhere. Because I, I think people like couldn't tell if they were for adults or for kids. Right. Like uh, my my other big influence, like the Le Cocon Masqué, which is translated to The Masked Cucumber, was <laughs> a very absurd <laughs> nonsense. I, I I don't really know if you can translate this comic because the words are just nonsense. Even in French, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, those are, were my parents' comics actually. So it was a a great discovery for me. <laughs> sure. No, those are lots of good uh, lots of good reading material there growing up and, and inspiring you then. But I'm wondering who or what inspires you to create today. I'm still drawn to the like old school cartoons, like uh, the old Looney Tunes uh, mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. um, Chuck Jones and uh, also Max Fletcher yeah. cartoons like uh, Betty Boop. I, mm -hmm. They're so surreal. And uh, for, for the, uh, for the Looney Tunes, it was such a, it was my way of learning about pantomime and uh, facial expressions because they were so, the way that these characters move told so much about how they lived. So it was a, it was a, a great learning experience actually for me as a kid to uh, when when I I wanted to draw, and uh, I, 
uh, my other inspirations are also like old silent films uh, like Chaplin and mm-hmm. Buster Keaton. They're, they're short uh, movies. I, I love the most. And uh, I also draw to Gendy, uh, Tartakovsky, uh, cartoons like uh, Samurai Jack and his mm-hmm. most recent Primal because his use of silence and uh, his use of atmosphere is so... Well, he, he can tell a whole story just by atmosphere. And it's so inspiring for me. Also, uh, another one of my inspiration that goes with atmosphere is uh, Franz Mazril, which is a, a Flemish uh, graphic artist from the early 20th century, which made and he, one, one of his books was uh, is called uh, Die Stadt, which is uh, translated to uh, the, the city, I think. It's just uh, like uh, illustration, like full pages, illustration, illustrations of a black and white city that is extremely oppressive and uh he uh, and it's it's very like german expressionism because it's so dark and bleak but it's got so much style to it and my last uh, my last inspiration uh is uh, right now is uh, isao uh, takata he's uh, one of the filmmakers well he was uh, he sadly passed away in 2018, I think. Uh, he was one of the filmmakers at uh, Studio Ghibli. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with Hayao Miyazaki. He uh, made movies like um, uh, Only Yesterday, mm-hmm. Pompoku, and uh, The Tale of Princess Kaguya. I love his movies because uh, I love Miyazaki too, but uh, Takahata has a way of telling stories, very simple stories about family and uh, human relations, but he's going to use uh, to describe like the feelings of the character. He's going to use metaphors, visual metaphors to speak of uh, a character's way of thinking. Like uh, if a character is in love, well, they won't say that they're in love. They will, they're, they're just going to go fly. They just take off. And I, I, I love these kind of touches. So, yeah, I I, I draw on and on about inspirations, but... Uh, oh, that's those, good. No, those are the are the big ones for me. Sure. Oh, very impressive, that's for sure. So so we're here today talking about one of your uh, latest projects, Casa Rodeo. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit more, you know, describe what that's all about and uh, how it came to be. It's uh, It's a story... About three roommates, we have a, a neurotic rabbit, a boisterous pig, and a mysterious duck. They're the three of them are roommates that gets that get abandoned by their house <laughs> because they're too messy. Their house literally takes off because they the, the house cannot take them anymore. <laughs> and so the three of them set off on a journey to find their home in the hope that it uh, it'll lodge them again. So it's a it's a comedy. It's a it's a silent comedy. It's told by pantomime. There's no dialogue, but it's very noisy. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you have sound effects and stuff in there too, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, well, it, it's a comedy. It's a comedy because there's a lot of slapsticks, and I mm-hmm. use sound to make uh, the slapstick vi- even more living. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a comedy, but it's also a coming a coming of age story with themes like uh, abandonment and uh, and grief so it's it's a bit my way of doing a cartoon but uh, i i always want to put like uh, human problems to these extraordinary events or characters so this uh so yeah the, it's uh, it's my second comic the first one was uh, called seven at the the same publisher uh, pow pow press it's the same characters again in these uh, in both these comics, but um, in Casa Rodeo we follow three characters: the rabbit, the pig, and the duck, and uh, their journey. Both uh, the, the three of them have to comes to grip uh, with uh, the loss of their home, and so uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a story about loss, and uh, and the three characters have to deal with grief in their own way. Right. Who who would you say is the audience for this particular story? Actually, I think it's pretty general. 
when I when I published my first comic, I I got to uh, to realize that uh, I had both kids and adult readers, so that was very fun for me because it, it's it's essentially a cartoon, like I said, and it was based on cartoons that I used to watch when I was a kid. But yeah. I I really wanted to uh, give real problems. Well, even if they're extraordinary, but the, the the feelings are still real. These characters are dealing with it with anxiety, loneliness, and anger. And uh, I, I think it's very, these themes are very much adult, but I, I think I find a way to make it so that kids could uh, could read more into them, actually, could take... Um, take some of them some of it with them actually yeah when you you mentioned your inspiration before about the the warner's cartoons the the merry melodies i remember those you yeah. could see a comedy and everything like i noticed in in some of your panels that you have you have faces on uh inanimate objects like rocks like trees yeah. like flowers so if you look hard enough you can see little little bits of that that come forth in their own little way giving uh, life as you say to to the story in in many ways so it's it's quite ingenious the way you do that thank you thank you very much yeah i, I wanted to make it the make it more cartoony the the way that the, the story progressed but uh, still keeping in mind that it was i, I wanted to, to treat the, the story with a lot of seriousness too even if there's a lot of goofiness all around <laughs> I want to switch gears a bit and talk about your creative process. Ask you a bit, like, what tools you use to actually create your book. Yeah, well, uh, actually, I'm very much a uh, ink and paper. <laughs> I use uh, black pink to uh, make the uh, the uh, the pages, and I I only use my computer to like clean up the uh, the pages, you know, imperfections and. and and so forth and uh, the coloring of the cover is done on photoshop but all the rest is done by hand i don't know i i tried to do it on uh, on the computer but it, it's always so much more satisfying for me to do it by hand yeah I, I don't know the drawing is so much more fun for me and uh speaking of the uh, creative process the it's pretty much by drawing that i'm making my my scenario actually i i don't write scripts i try to but i, I often fail <laughs> to do so yeah so so drawing is pretty much at the center of my whole creative process it's by drawing that i end up thinking of other ways that the stories could go i begin with the first page and then i i go forward from that can you sit in one place and draw or do you take a notebook with you in various places and draw outside and then come back in and flesh out the ideas in, in a larger canvas? Actually, yeah, uh, it depends on the places. I, I do I do, do that, but uh, it's uh, it's got to be very specific places. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'm going to go at a, a cafe or uh, the library. The library is a great place for drawing. Because you you just go to the uh, the comic section <laughs> and you you get all the comics that you like or or comics that you don't know and maybe you'll find something interesting or an, an idea and uh, you you get yourself a whole bunch of books and you you start drawing. I think it's a great place to draw, but uh, drawing outside I've I've tried it, but it's it's pretty hard for me. I I like the uh, the intimacy. Your story takes place majority of it is outside in nature yeah. and, and and i was picking up on that that perhaps you were looking at different locales uh, actually, perhaps yeah actually i go on uh, on long walks during the the summer and autumn time even even during winter i go on long walks i don't draw though but i i do like to think a lot when i when i walk oh very uh, good yeah, yeah 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 there's a there's a little river uh, like uh, one hour away from my home and I, I walk from there and uh, I follow the river and it, it, it's always a, a great feeling because uh, yeah I, I think it's in nature that I get most of my reflective time <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, not, not not to say that I have most of my ideas but I get the most time to just 
reflect and relax when I'm in the woods. Very good. Yeah. Now we've been talking about Casa Rodeo. That's that's out now with Pow Pow Press. I'm wondering if you have any other future projects that you can talk about. Well, right now, I, I mean, I don't know what the story is going to be, but I really, I, I really want to follow up with these characters. I mean, I have two books right now that it, it's the same universe, it's the same characters. I, I don't know. I really want to try to do another one. I don't know what the story is going to be, but I mean, the, these are characters that follow me since the end of high school. Mm-hmm. And they're like, the th- these three characters are pretty much different facets of my personality. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. And, yeah, and it's fun to just continue to explore them in a universe that's, well, it's a universe that pretty much anything can happen. It's very absurd, it's surreal, and it's it's very fun to explore this universe with these characters. And uh, because when anything can happen, well, there's not really any limit to what you can tell. Maybe I'll find a limit, but I I haven't stopped yet. It's it's so much fun to to draw these characters still. It's it's a work in progress. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, where where do you recommend that people go online, perhaps social media, to find out more about your current work, and where eventually they'll find out more about your future projects as well? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I think the best place is uh, on uh, Instagram. You can follow me on uh, Tom T H O M underscore il- illustration. So it's Tom Illustration. That's pretty much the best place you can. Uh, look for my my art and my my, my news for my next uh, my next comic. Very good. Well, Tom, those are all the questions I have for you. But I'm wondering if there's something I didn't ask that you'd like to get across in this interview. It's a it's a story that uh, took uh, a lot of time to do. It's a story that is really close to my heart, actually. And uh, I hope that the the people that will uh, read it will uh, will like it. It's a it's a weird story. It's a it's a story also without without um, without words. Like I said, it's a silent comic. I'm I'm very proud of it. Thanks to Tom for the chat. You can discover more about Tom on Instagram at Instagram.com/tom_illustrations. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already. Please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts, and please leave a good rating. Also check out the TrueNorthCountryComics.com website and follow on Twitter at TrueNorthComics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube, so please like and subscribe to that video channel. And please send any feedback to John at TrueNorthCountryComics.com. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. Truth Country Comics podcast is copyright Truth Country Comics, copyright 2021.